Snipers, you have to see what's happening in the Bitcoin price this Sunday as we have a full moon today and we also have a new weekly candle opening, meaning that Bitcoin could potentially be seeing some volatility here in the next 24 to 48 hours. Traditional markets closed really bad and so we have to face that coming into Monday as well. Futures markets are about to open. Let's dive straight into this Easter update. Happy Easter for those celebrating, by the way. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you appreciate these holiday updates. I want to first talk about Bitcoin and then we'll talk about what we're watching with the revolving parts. Right now, Bitcoin's weekly candle looks like it wants to close in the next two hours fully below its 20 week moving average. Now, why is this significant? Well, the 20 week moving average in yellow is everyone's bull market support band. And now we're below it, which means that we could potentially see Bitcoin prolong in this sideways state of range bound price action between 42,000 and 38,000 until we can make a decision whether or not we want to flip bullish in the macro. We're so close to this 20 week moving average. And so what we really want Bitcoin to do coming into this week is, of course, conquer 42,000 and get back above this 20 week moving average. That's the macro. And so with this weekly candle closing and we go into the more micro time frames, why are the micro time frames important? Well, everything will morph from the smaller time frames to the larger time frames. Just notice how Bitcoin is wedged between the 600 day moving average and this 100 day moving average right now. So it's a very tight range that we're in. We know the real resistance is 42,000 and the real support is 38,000. So what that means is if we see anything abnormal with the S&P 500 or equity markets, and I'm addressing this because we had this bearish continuation candle close for the S&P 500, we could potentially see the S&P 500, even futures markets open up the week with some downside. But because Bitcoin has been resilient, as we've been discussing here on the Snipers channel, I would only expect Bitcoin to come and maybe wick down to 38,000 if we see a downside scenario with the S&P 500 or if we see an upside scenario, we could just come up to 42,000. I think that what we really want to keep in mind right now more than anything is that we do have some revolving parts that we have to monitor this week coming into the more macro perspective. We know the DXY is eyeing a destination. We don't know what that destination is, but it's certainly on its radar. It could be coming here very soon, or maybe we could see it break out to see abnormal strength breaking the 2020 highs. And we did get some puzzle pieces last week, like the Euro to USD pairing, showing that the DXY may want to see some abnormal strength. And so we got this bearish confirmation last week. Hopefully this week we can get back above this support for the Euro to USD pairing. If you don't know why this is such a significant chart, you have to watch some of our updates that we posted last week. I'll just quickly mention it's inversely correlated with the DXY. And so every time we've seen the Euro to USD pairing show weakness, we've been in a bear market. So breaking the support was a bad thing last week. This is something we want to monitor into this week because that could be a confirmation that DXY has a lot more room to go to the upside. And now we can potentially even talk about the DXY moving into what we could sort of call price discovery, not really because it has been at these highs before we go to the monthly chart, go back in the 1900s, right? The late 1900s, we were up here back in 99, but we haven't yet seen the DXY really get there since 2015. We've been consolidating in this sort of vertical range. So the Euro USD pairing is important right now because it, it does say that this type of scenario for the DXY is not impossible. It's something that could happen. And obviously, if we're seeing the DXY move up in a transitionary phase with some strength, it's not good for Bitcoin in the short term. In the long term, it doesn't matter. The DXY could continue going up. Bitcoin has always outperformed in the macro. But we're talking about immediate short term price action. We have a full moon today. We have a new weekly candle. And so Bitcoin inside of its vein, I would call it a range, right? It's almost like a vein. It's 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 a range inside of a range. It's, it's really moving sideways and tightening up here. So it has to make a decision. And so if we start to get puzzle pieces saying, OK, DXY wants to strengthen, we might even see the euro to USD pairing continue further down. The S&P 500 may not like that and the equity markets could react to the downside. And so, yes, there is a potential Bitcoin decides to move to the downside. 
but we know Bitcoin being resilient, 38,000, 36,500, and 34,788 could all get tested. All of these are major snipers volume support levels. And we can go all the way down to 35,000 and still just form a higher low. And so it's really more about how significant of a downside scenario is on the table for the S&P 500. Because if it's just this and a higher low, then we shouldn't be too concerned for Bitcoin. But if it's something like this, that could be a little bit of a different playbook. And we would have to discuss that as that would come. But for now, what we really want to monitor is that euro to USD for that early confirmation. And then the other weird thing that we want to just quickly discuss is Bitcoin dominance is just kind of slipping down. And it kind of makes me wonder, does it really want to see this push to the upside? Because we're expecting Bitcoin dominance to come up above all of its daily moving averages to follow the gold to Bitcoin chart, which it's been showing a lot of correlations with. And we got the leading indicator and leading confirmation from the gold to Bitcoin chart that we may want to get back above all these daily moving averages. And that could happen in two ways. We see an overall downside scenario in the total market. And that would lead Bitcoin dominance to potentially see less downside in all coins. Bitcoin dominance comes up and then we can solve that puzzle piece. But the other thing is Bitcoin can just rally up Maybe altcoins just do not immediately perform with Bitcoin. And I think that would be the better way to see Bitcoin dominance come up because that would even validate the fact that we may be resuming this trend back into price discovery for Bitcoin to maybe even break new all time highs by the end of this year. So let's watch what happens to Bitcoin dominance if we see a volatile move. That's going to be important on our radar. So more than ever, snipers, this week is critical. I know people are celebrating the holidays. They might not be focused on the charts, but it's super important this week to follow what's going on in the markets because we are seeing a lot of puzzle pieces come together and now we can start making decisions on what we're expecting to happen in the next few months and the next few maybe quarters. And so I think that we are certainly entering a decision point, especially with Bitcoin's volatility coming down and so forth. So just look at this total market cap, by the way. I really like this total market cap. It's been a very good way to just kind of indicate the strength of the overall market. Notice how we held this major support and this is not just a volume support. This is a macro channel support that we've just been holding. And so we also are fully below the 20 week moving average, the total market cap. But I just want you to pay attention to this because I think the reason we're seeing strength of the total market cap is look how bullish the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart is looking. Even on this weekly chart, these wicks are extremely bullish with this bullish continuation weekly candle. We are setting ourselves up for the Ethereum to Bitcoin pairing to see strength and other altcoins to lead in that exact way. And that would certainly just move the total market cap further up. And it will also allow Bitcoin to move further up. And so it's really interesting what puzzle pieces are on the table because it almost is as if right now could be a decision point for Bitcoin that we may remember for a long time. Because if this Ethereum to Bitcoin chart just continues showing strength, that's indicating institutions are not fearful in the market. They're not just willing to be in the digital version of gold, but they're also willing to initiate positions in something like Ethereum, which has tons of competitors, Solana, Terrace coming on the table, all of these different competitors. The fact is, if institutions are in altcoins and Bitcoin, they have no fear of the cryptocurrency market. They want to invest more and as more capital comes in, we start to see these prices come up. And so Ethereum to Bitcoin chart, man, if you're a bull like I am, let's hold on to that puzzle piece because it's truly on our favor. And it could be the puzzle piece that allows us to stay strong with our bullish bias, despite maybe some things falling apart, like the DXY, the Euro to USD pairing. And if that's the case, then Bitcoin's ready to make that decision, which is why this was such an important update. It's a full moon. Let's see what happens. If you study the moon cycles, once again, there is an effect. If you just look at every new moon and full moon and how Bitcoin's price action has reacted to that, you really start to see something. So maybe while you're watching this video, we see a move. Just remember the range resistance 42,000 is what we want to get above right now. That gets us in the position to get above that 20 week moving average. And that would be the best case scenario for Bitcoin to potentially have the opportunity to see new all time highs by the end of this year. If we see some weakness in the markets, more range bound sideways price action, it's OK. Maybe we start taking some long positions down at those support levels at 38,000, 36, 5, 35. But unless we see something abnormal, something crazy fundamentally come on the table, 
then I don't expect Bitcoin to see any sort of capitulation below that 600 day moving average. We could see wicks below. It. We've seen that already. But for the most part, Bitcoin has held strong at the 600 day moving average. And as long as we can just hold on to that 600 day moving average, it's not going to take much more time for fundamental to start kicking in. And at that point, price action will start leading us up. So I think Will Clemente, I watched an interview with him today. He mentioned on the interview, he said, well, with Bitcoin right now, we may not be seeing a ton of demand, but the on-chain analytics are showing that when demand does come in, because supply continues to dwindle on exchanges and so forth, it could really bring a lot of volatility for Bitcoin to see upside action. All we need is a little spur of demand, but it's not like we're seeing long-term hodlers sell. We're not seeing too many concerns on chain. So fundamentally, things look strong, Cypress. With that, this was a little bit of an extended update. I'm going to go have some Easter dinner with some friends and family. Hope you're having an amazing Easter if you celebrate. And smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, Snipers, if you support this content. And I'll see you all next time, Snipers. Oh, by the way, get some outdoors in if you can. I know a lot of us get stuck indoors during the holidays. Get outdoors. Breathe in the fresh air. I think it's really important, especially during times like this when the market is so undecided. We know fundamentally... Bitcoin is going to outperform the S&P 500 over the next decade. And so it is certainly important with Bitcoin right now down 40% from its all time high to monitor what's happening, because at any point in time, things can switch back into the favor of the bulls. And we'll see this continued price discovery for Bitcoin to break the joke of an all time high of 69,000 on Binance USDT spot. Bearing. What a joke, right? 69,000, not the top, not in my opinion. Until next time, Snipers, I'll see you all later. Snipers.